But in terms of the Federal Reserve, if the Federal Reserve comes out today and says 75 basis points, we told you 75 right. basis points, 75 basis points is what you can expect. I think the market will be more than fine with that, and I think the market will continue on its prevailing trend, which is higher. So you say we. Are you using the royal we here? Because we got to do keep in mind, S&P hit another record high just yesterday. So it seems like investors are feeling confident, at least about the market. I have every reason to. All the reasons are in place to feel confident right. about the market. So it's a few people. There, there is, well, there's the, the, the perma bears right. who are trying to find some form of is this an inflection point? Is the market going to roll over? Ooh, we see something here that might disrupt the rally. We see something there that might tell us the Federal Reserve is, guess what? They're not going to be cutting rates. They're actually going to raise rates. I mean, there were calls at the beginning of the year right. from people who were saying the Federal Reserve, the next move is they're going to raise rates. No, that's not what's going on. You have growth. You have disinflation. You have an AI story. You can advance, uh, invest, rather, beyond the Magnificent Seven. The best performing equity sector year to date is communication services. Two, three, and four, energy, financials, industrials. The broadening that people the were looking broadening. for. The broadening. You want go. to go outside the U.S.? You've got the Nikkei. You've got the U.K. You've got Europe. You've got Taiwan. There's opportunities. I don't, I guess it's just human nature. I don't understand when you have a calm environment why is it that we're always searching for the storm when the storm isn't there? All right, maybe that's human nature. Brent, I'm going to come over to you. Are you in the <laughs> consternation camp that Joe was just referencing just now, or do you see this as a very strong situation? And also, I want to ask, what are you expecting from the Fed? Well, I think investors need to remember you always sound smarter when you're bearish, right? Because you can always point things out. But history will tell you that the S&P, going back to the 50s, goes up 75% of the time. And I think what Joe laid out is that we do have a calm market. We have very low credit spreads. And so that's not telling you there's stress in the system. GDP is fine. Inflation, you know, we're in the, we have a three handle, a solid three handle around that. And so, and then we have, to Joe's point, the AI story, which really is just, just getting started. And so I think as it relates to the Fed meeting today, what investors need to know, what I think through is, how relevant is this? And so in March, they come out with their new summary of economic project projections in the dot plot. But going back in time, Frank, they've only been correct 47% of the time. And it's not, I'm not saying this as an indictment against the Fed. It's just we as humans are very terrible at predicting the future. And so I think if they were to come out and say, well, we're not going to do three, we're going to do two, and the market would overreact. I think that would be opportunistic for investors to actually add to equities because the history is not very not very strong on the Fed actually being able to properly project this just because of human nature. I mean, human nature is a big factor in all this. Steve Weiss, I'm going to come over to you. Uh, Bryn said, you always sound smarter when you sound bearish. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, but I'll make a couple of observations. The first is... Uh, Joe should moderate his coffee intake before coming on the show. You were, you were on I'm fire just excited because you came yeah. in on set. Yeah, and well, you're not that, remote. And that's good reason yeah, to be. Absolutely. Uh, you feel very close to me. Yeah, I heard usually the somebody between us. Yeah, well, I heard the applause at the yeah. stock exchange. Yes, right, so exactly. Let, let's go from the love fest to the Fed. Okay, so for the fest, look, you know, from the Fed, I don't think they're going to come out and say two or three or four or anything. Uh, what you have to pay attention to is the narrative that uh, that Powell has at the press conference in dot plot. Is he going to stay? on, you know, on theme, which is that, hey, you know, we're, we're poised to ease, um, not verbatim, he won't say that, right. or is it going to over, uh, uh, you know, overly uh, play out what's we, what we've seen in terms of hotter inflation numbers, not meaningfully hotter, but keep in mind that they've reversed the trend that was going straight down. So he's going to give a nod to that. The market really shouldn't care all that much because the, because the economy is very strong. And so there is no difference, frankly, if he goes in May or June right. or July, whenever the meetings so are. You're in the camp that as long as the cuts are coming, that's all that matters. Yes and no. Yes and no. Because we are seeing some underlying data that is weaker. So as Jamie Dimon says, he's got a great view in the in the economy, right? That soft landing is not, you know, not a slam dunk, as has David Solomon. So, and they're seeing from so many vantage points globally. So look, you know, you could take what, what Joe and Bryn said as complacency, right. and bulls always sound complacent, yep. right? <laughs> All the time, right? That's the bullish story, things are great. Um, 
And I sort of think they could be okay here, but this right. may be a stumbling point. And to Bryn's point, if there is a sell on Powell's comments, depending upon the severity of the comments, I do think it is a buying opportunity. All right, so we're going to come back to you guys right now. We're going to go to someone else who is data-driven just like the Fed, our Steve Leisman, standing by waiting for that j Powell news conference. Steve, been watching you all day. You've been looking at the Fed's uh, outlook compared to the actual data. What is the outlook compared to the data? What is that telling you about what investors should expect coming up later today? So I want to first side with Joe Terranova's equanimity, his calmness in the face of all of this. Um, and I think the data bears him out. I just I was just calculating some stuff there, Frank. Uh, in the time since the Fed last met, the 10 years up 40 basis points. <clears throat> The outlook for Fed rates this year is up 74 basis points. In other words, they backed out three rate cuts from the outlook. Um, and the S&P is up 7%. So it's paid to be cool. It's paid to be chill in the face of the outlook of both a little bit higher inflation as well as less Fed easing in the system here. It has uh, been a pretty good bet. I think what we're going to have today is a little bit of frozen in time. I'm really interested, Frank, and I, this is what I expect, that the Fed will hold on to this phrase in here from the last statement. I'm going to read it to you. The committee does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence inflation is moving sustainably towards 2 percent. If they repeat that from January, what does it tell you? It tells you they don't have the confidence yet. It tells you we still need several more months of data to get that confidence to cut rates. So there's really going to be no change at all. Obviously, we'll watch the projections. You guys were talking about that. Right. Some concern that they go from three uh, expected rate cuts down to two. But that's really where we're at. And to me is the unknowable question, which your guys around the table are more expert in answering than I am, which is how much does the market really care? better growth, better earnings on this side versus less Fed easing and maybe some more stubborn inflation on the other side. It seems to have paid off so far to be Terra Nova chill. Just leave it there. <laughs> Terra Nova chill. We're going to we're going to coin that phrase. I'm going to trademark it and make some T-shirts. Steve, uh, before we let you go, though, I want to lean into your expertise for a minute. So I uh, had the chance to talk to New York Times reporter Gina Smilik earlier today. She put out an article that Essentially, people are wringing their hands over sticky inflation, but she was pointing a CPI, headline CPI, in fact, at 3.2 percent. I thought that the Fed's preferred gauge is PCE, and when you look at PCE, that's a tick under 3 percent. It's a different story, and especially core PCE. That's a, I'm sorry, headline, I'm sorry, core PCE, just a tick under 3 percent. Right. Why aren't we looking more towards that PCE number as opposed to back towards that CPI number? I think I think we are. I think what happened, uh, Frank, is that people take the PCE and the CPI, or the PPI and the CPI, and they come up with a forecast for, uh, in, I guess it's next week, uh, we're going to get the, C, the, the Fed's preferred, preferred indicator. You see that runs about a half a point cooler than the CPI does. So really the question is we're kind of stuck at this 2.8 to 2.9 uh, percent range so when we get the number next week the chart on your screen there is going to flatline a little bit it's not going to go down as it's been going and that's really the concern so what what i think is going to happen here is i don't think powell is going to be too exercised by the last two months i think there's an argument that certainly january was a kind of series of one-off price increases you've had a little bit of pressure come from the energy industry i don't think he's going to abandon his general forecast or the Fed will abandon the general forecast that it's going to come down this year. Their forecast is for that core PC number to hit 2-4 this year. And if it's on the way there, that's enough for the Fed to probably have confidence to begin cutting interest rates. It's just going to take, again, like I said at the beginning of this conversation, a couple more months of data to show that we're back on track to get there. And then, Frank, there's this tussle that will happen, which is this idea of how much concern is there that if they stay too high for too long, it could cause something of a, of, of a more severe downturn right. than anybody's looking for here. Right now, there is not the indication of that, but I'm pretty sure the Fed is sort of on the edge of its seat, really combing the data, looking for just how severe the slowdown might be and whether or not it's going to have to react from a policy standpoint.